Hi all and welcome to this podcast on micro, small and medium REITs or SM REITs for the purpose of this discussion. In this podcast, my two colleagues, Palomita and Sapna, along with me, will delve into recent amendments and nuances brought in by the SEBI Real Estate Investment Amendment Regulations of 2024, which amended the SEBI REIT Regulations of 2014. So in India, REITs are regulated by the Securities and Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI, which has already prescribed specific guidelines for the listing and operation of REITs. Now, earlier this year, in March 2024, SEBI has amended these REIT regulations and you know notified the micro, small and medium REITs to be covered within the ambit of the REIT regulations. Before we get into you know details and structure nuances of SM REITs, I think it's important to just discuss the background that led to this amendment. So over the last you know couple of years, fractional ownership had gained significant popularity in India. Now this model allows multiple unrelated or related individuals to co-own and share uh, high-value assets and all the risks associated therewith. So it provides an opportunity for investors who may not have, you know, that kind of capital to purchase an entire property to still own or participate in real estate or infrastructure assets. Now, the issue around it was that there were no proper regulations and governance. And, you know, there was always question and, you know, fear around whether fractional ownership of investments was safe. So in May 2023, SEBI evaluated and you know issued a consultation paper laying down a brief framework for SM REITs, which eventually you know was brought into effect in March 2024 by way of the REIT reg- amendment to the REIT regulations and paved the way for you know a regulatory framework to govern such fractional ownership within the ambit of the REIT regulations itself. Now what what this did is that, you know, these smaller REITs offered opportunities to smaller investors to access real estate market and benefit from, you know, rental income, capital appreciation and ensured that this was regulated. A quick brief on the structure of SM REITs is that, you know, each SM REIT has to be set up as a trust and, you know, there needs to be a trust deed which has to be registered under the provisions of the Indian Registration Act of 1908. Now, the main objective of the trust deed obviously should be to undertake the activity of SM REITs through one or more scheme in accordance with the SEBI amended regulations. Each SM REIT is required to be listed on a recognized stock exchange. Now, depending on, you know, the number of schemes that each SM REIT needs to or wishes to float, there will have to be an SPV or a special purpose vehicle, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of this SM REIT that has to be incorporated. Each SPV will house a specific real estate uh, project or scheme for the purpose of the SM REIT regulations. Each of these SPVs need to be you know, held 100% by the SM REIT and the SM REIT needs to exercise absolute control over these SPVs. And the ownership and control of the underlying real estate pro- project, which is listed through the SM REIT, will also have to be vested in, within the SPV. Now, as part of the structure, you know, each of the applicant will also be required to appoint a trustee that is registered under the SEBI Debenture Trustee Regulations of 1993 for each SM REIT. And the trustee in turn will also have to appoint an investment manager for the purpose of overseeing of this, uh, of each of the SM REITs and enter into relevant investment management agreement for this SM REIT. Now, uh, Sapna, over to you. So what are the significant amendments which have been brought in specifically, which ensure accountability for, you know, smaller investors to invest into such real estate projects? Yes, yes, Kyati, thank you. So, uh, one of the major amendments that was introduced was the introduction of a new asset class in the definition of uh, REITs. REITs now, after the amendment, refers to a person that pulls INR 50 crores or more 
for the purpose of issuing units to at least 200 investors or more so as to acquire and manage real estate assets or properties that would entitle such investors to receive the income generated without giving them the day-to-day -day control over the management and operation of such real estate assets or properties. Now, SEBI has also permitted the establishment of SM REITs having an asset value of at least INR 25 CR uh, compared to the minimum asset value of INR 500 crores that was earlier required for the existing REITs. The minimum number of members for the SM REITs, however, shall continue to be 200 investors and this 200 investors shall exclude investment managers. Now the next major amendment is with respect to who or what would constitute as an investment manager for the purposes of SM REITs. An investment manager shall mean a company incorporated in India which sets up the SM REIT, manages assets and investments of the SM REITs and undertakes operational activities of the SM REITs. The minimum net worth requirement for the investment manager shall be at least INR 20 crores, out of which at least INR 10 crores should be in the form of liquid assets. Further, the investment manager for the SM REITs may also act as the sponsor and is required to have prior experience of at least two years in the real estate industry and or in the fund management in real estate. Further, at least half of the directors of the investment manager should be in independent and should not be directors of the manager of investment manager of any other SMDs. Now, there are certain other guidelines on the minimum unit holding based on the time period from initial listing of schemes units for such investment managers that are also provided in the regulations and something that we will not be covering in detail in this podcast. Thank you, Sapna. So, you know, one important point to note here is that why, you know, the SEBI has brought in the concept of SM REITs. It's not necessary that, you know, merely because, say, a company acquires and manages real estate assets, it's deemed to or it is mandatorily required to get a registration as an SM REIT. It's more and more as a mode to do that if require if you know if such company deems fit palomita can you highlight you know some of the key safeguards introduced by these regulations specifically that you know ensures investor protections and you know touch upon around valuation and distribution aspects brought in sure kathy thank you so the various that the regulations have now brought in majorly uh, revolve around valuation, distribution, as well as the mode of funding that has been uh, mentioned in the regulations. The first one with respect to valuation, the investment manager of the SM REIT is required to ensure an annual comprehensive valuation of each of the scheme's assets by a qualified independent valuer and is supposed to submit such report within two months after the financial year ends to the investment manager. Then, if any significant events impact the asset's value, a fresh valuation report is also required to be obtained within two months from the date of such event. The valuer must have at least five years of real estate valuation experience and must not be affiliated with the investment manager or the trustee of such SM REIT any issue of units to the public and any other issue of units, the valuer should also undertake full valuation of the REIT assets and include a summary of the report in the offer document that is provided to SEBI. The valuation report also cannot be more than six months old from the date of such issuance. And any property acquisitions or sales which require a full valuation and the same valuer cannot reassess an asset within 12 months of acquisition unless it was involved in the initial valuation as now, moving on to distributions, the investment manager of the SM REIT is required to ensure that at least 95% of the SPV's net distribution, uh, distributable cash flows are distributed to the SM REIT scheme, subject to the adherence of Companies Act, with retained amounts used as specified by SEBI. Each scheme is required to distribute 100% of its net distributable cash flows to unit holders of the SM REIT. These distributions must be declared at least once in a quarter within 15 working days from end of a quarter and paid to such unit holders of the SM REIT within seven working days from the date of declaration of the uh, distributions. 
in case any of these payments are delayed the investment manager is liable to pay 15% annual interest for the delayed period without recovering this excess from the sm rate this provides for a safeguard for the investors uh, in a scenario where the payments get delayed where they are also uh, able to uh, able to get more 15% of the interest on the distributions that they are already entitled to lastly with respect to mode of funding the sm rate can raise funds from both indian and foreign investors through the unit issuance with foreign investments subject to rbi and the government of india regulations applicable on them if leverage is disclosed in the scheme's initial offer document both the scheme and its spvs may undertake such leverage the scheme must raise capital by issuing units to specific specific scheme holders and if leveraging it may do so through borrowings or debt security issuances under sebi regulations spvs shall raise cap from equity investment from the sm reit scheme and may borrow from such scheme as well the total borrowings and deferred payments net of cash equivalents at the scheme level shall not exceed 49% of the scheme's asset value if these exceed 25% of the value of the scheme then for further borrowings a credit rating from a registered agency and approval from unit holders is required as is specified in the regulations so overall the regulations have provided for uh, these few safeguards where the investors are uh, secured by all ways possible uh thank you palavata uh sapna back to you on you know if you could just touch upon what are the kind of restrictions on mandatory listing investment conditions and some nuances around lending and focused investments yes so it is pertinent to know that the sm reits will have to be mandatorily listed on a recognized stock exchange to ensure a wider scope of participation from the investors in these sm reits and to ensure ample exit rights are provided to the unit holders now these sm reits shall be permitted to launch schemes and the units of each scheme shall be in dematerialized form the minimum offer and allotment to the public in each scheme of sm reit shall be at least 25% of the total outstanding units of such scheme moreover the minimum price of each unit of the scheme of the sm reit shall be inr 10 lakhs or such other amount as may be specified by sebi from time to time now in order to align with sebi's objectives on structured structured real estate investments each scheme should invest at least 95% of its assets in completed and revenue generating properties an an sm reit is not permitted to invest in under construction or non revenue generating real estate further each scheme can invest up to 5% of the scheme's assets in unencumbered liquid assets further the spv must solely own all assets acquired or intended to be acquired by the sm reit scheme as it is a wholly owned subsidiary of the reit additionally the scheme is prohibited from lending to en- to any entity except its own spv and the spv itself is not allowed to lend to any entity um thank you sapna the last point you know to note is that the sm reit regulations also prescribe for mi- migration of you know existing entities that may be in the business of acquisition and uh, operations of real estate assets so what the regulations state is that you know within 6 months from the date of notification of these amended regulations which is basically Ma- march 8 2024 or such other time frame that sebi may permit all of these applicants can submit their migration plan including details of what are the existing entities what's the structure and what is the entire migration in respect uh, in respect of the registration itself and such migration should be completed within 6 months or as permitted by sebi with this you know we conclude our podcast on sm reits as we may note you know sm reits clearly is an awaited and welcome change in the industry and is expected to initiate growth pattern to encourage you know smaller investors to invest in uh reits and you know has lot more flexibility with respect to decrease threshold increase viability of options however you know since this is fairly new it it will have to stand the test of time but 
an interesting uh, aspect here is that you know we've already seen a couple of uh, sm reits being registered in the last few months you know such as property share efc reits so it's it's just a matter of time to see how you know more and more real estate business entities look to migrate into sm reits module and you know list more real estate investment trusts on the recognized stock exchange thank you